All right, y'all, so I'm here with another video. Again, if y'all don't know, I have this on because I graduated, okay? I have my MBA now, so this is my little graduation because we can't really have a real graduation because of COVID. So anyway, let's get to it. So I'm not gonna lie to y'all. My notes for the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, they're a little bit like short and all over the place because I was like cooking when it was on and I was trying to take notes at the same time, so work with me, okay? So I might not be going in specific order of everything that happened because i was just i watched and i tried to catch up my notes later but anyway we're gonna try our best here so uh, let's start off with jen so jen is pretty much tell, telling us how after the party how sharif didn't talk has she she hasn't talked to sharif pretty much since the whole party situation and i think it was going on like four days she hasn't talked to him and she hasn't seen him and of course she's going around blaming everybody else saying that it's Whitney's fault which I'll get to like I said how I feel about Whitney so we move on to Whitney and Heather and Whitney and Heather are having a conversation about the whole thing and um just pretty much how they both felt like the whole situation went Whitney said that she was a little upset with Heather because Heather just kind of jumped in but I'm sorry Whitney you was taking forever to tell her you was taking forever because if I was Heather I would have the same thing girl they Mary said the day something question about you you kind of well and I and then and then and then and I and, and okay but well, you know you know the type of person I am okay wait wait let me start off okay you know that I'm a stage shooter you know I'm a stage shooter okay okay hold on wait 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 like I'm not saying this right like you was bullshitting so yes Heather just went out and said it this is how I feel about the whole thing I feel like at the end of the day Whitney that was not I feel like that was not the correct time or place to tell her I agree with that However, I do feel like Whitney's intentions were a tad bit messy, a tad bit messy, but I also feel like she probably really was trying to come to you as a friend, but I don't think that that was the right moment. I think that she could have picked any other time to tell her. She could have picked the day before, she could have picked afterwards, but right then and there, and then especially you knowing how volatile Jen is, that probably wasn't the best time to freaking tell her. Um, before I go any further, um, Whitney... Whitney, um, you know I like you, girl. You know I do. You, you, you know I do. Hold on, because I want to make sure I got my, I want to make sure I got everything correct before I, um, hold on. I want to make sure that I have all of this correct. Ha, that's what happened here. Okay, I was going to say, so she refused her friends okay because okay so i had seen something online right from ashley miller if y'all watch ashley miller um on youtube i seen on her twitter that she said she was like so whitney from the real house of salt lake city is a trump supporter and i'm gonna read what this says here this is from screen rant real house of salt lake city whitney rose defends herself after friend attends capital coup okay whitney rose has had to defend herself after her friend sarah now remember sarah is the girl that we met last week was seen attending what did she say she put on her she put out a statement she put a statement that said i am devastated by the events that took place at the capitol on wednesday i was not there and do not support it humanity needs more love and kind and kindness right now let's stop the hate okay girl okay 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 Okay, gotcha. Because, see, I was going to have to read you, Whitney, because I heard, because the way I had read it originally, or I had heard is that you was a that you was a Trump supporter. So I'm glad I got out that I got that out the way. I hope you really aren't. You don't seem like the type that would be. You seem like you're, you're 30. So you definitely are like, you're definitely a millennial. So not that millennials don't support him. I'm just saying, because Sarah is a millennial, but I'm just saying. Well, that's good to get out of the way. Anyway, so then we have lisa and her talking to her husband i can't stand lisa and i want her off the show she's boring she doesn't bring anything to this show she thinks that she's better than everybody i don't like her i hope next season that they i hope they do her like they did um what's her name sharice i hope she gets first season and after this she's gone but she's talking to her husband and pretty much saying how you know she had fun at the party but she felt like whitney was just doing absolutely too much like you're twerking in front of other people's husbands I feel like you're a hater and I feel like even if Whitney was doing too much none of that really matters because you just don't like her you just gonna find a reason to say something to her anyway it was a party it was a dance party at that they was having a dance battle yeah was she doing kind of a lot I mean a little bit but she was drunk and everybody was having fun you're the only person who would have your nose stuck up in the air and it's because you don't like her we all understand that okay um 
and she pretty much says that Whitney is a liar as far as you know what she said I believe well fuck it's not even Whitney I believe I believe Mary I believe Mary so then Whitney calls Mary you know to talk to her about what happened and um even Mary said out her mouth like I wouldn't have did it at his party like that's just me like I know like I'm a little crazy but I wouldn't even did it at this party um I, I thought that that was wrong but Whitney wanted to clarify she like let me clarify you did say that Meredith and Lisa both said that they were afraid of Jen she's like oh no she's like I don't lie like that they did say she's like and I understand why um they're not saying it because they're scared and she's like to me all of the women are scared of Jen except me I believe that I believe that 110 percent just the way that Whitney and Heather both coddled the fuck out of Jen at the end of this episode let me know that y'all are both scared of her I feel like all y'all hoes are scared of her probably because y'all not used to like going back and forth with people and she raises her voice a little bit so y'all all get a little like frazzled or whatever I don't think it's fair though how it seems like Mary is before I didn't believe her but it the more that the episodes are going on it does seem like y'all are purposely like leaving Mary out of everything and I'm not trying to say that it's a racist thing but it, it it's coming off that way I'm not saying that it is but it's coming off like why is it all of y'all girls get the group up but Mary has to be on the outside when yes Mary was wrong about what she did to Jen but I feel like you know with saying the whole hospital thing but I feel like Jen has done way worse than that this entire season and y'all are not ostracizing her. So I do believe Mary when she's like, I don't think it's fair that y'all are leaving me on out because she is on this show too. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't I don't like the optics of it all. I don't like it. I don't like it. And I'm not even like a big Mary fan. I really don't even care for Mary, but I do see the bullshit. I can see it. So where we at? Sorry, y'all. Where we at? So yeah, so like I said, so Mary's like, no, I'm not a liar, and I believe Mary 110%. Now, I don't know which happened first. I don't know. I think I think this happened first, and then the dinner happened later. So let's talk about the uh, the dinner with the husbands in a while. So Meredith and Seth and Lisa and her husband, they end up going out to eat, and, you know, Meredith is telling them, and, you know, how, you know, we're back together, and, you know, we're married, and we're not separated, and, and you know, everything's just so good now. Listen here. Do y'all, I, I want y'all to go and watch Color Me Pink, P-Y-N-K, a.k.a. Keisha Irvin, and I didn't think about it till she said it. I did feel like the whole reconciliation, it felt fake from Meredith's side. And Keisha said this, and I'm starting to really believe that. I think, I really do think that Meredith possibly reconciled with her husband because of all of this shit that's probably about to hit the fan. I really, I, it, now that Keisha said it, I can see that. I can see it being that Meredith probably only really reconciled with him because of the show and because she didn't want to look a certain type of way and possibly because of what might come out after this. Um, I don't know. It always seems genuine from Seth's side about being in, in a marriage, but I don't know. It just doesn't come off. It just, it's not my business. So I don't really care, but it does not come off genuine from Meredith's side that she really wants to be with this man because it really wasn't that long ago that you ain't want nothing to do with him. And I mean, things can change, but it felt like it was a quick change. Like, it was really, really quick, fast, in a hurry. Because she was like, oh, we really needed to be apart. And like I said in my last episode, I understand not talking to each other at all. But y'all had been apart for months and months because he do always go away to work. Something about it, it just seems a little off to me. I don't know why, but it just seems off. And then, you know, Lisa is all excited and calling them goals like if they can't make it then, then, then nobody we don't have hope lisa like i told you you need to be worried about you and your husband making sure that your husband don't leave you don't worry about meredith for what she got going on you better make sure that you got your household under control and that your husband doesn't leave you maybe you're thinking well if meredith can get her marriage together i can no because see y'all have two completely different issues just saying at least you talk too fucking much that's how i feel too your husband thinks you talk too much too i could tell that so then Whitney invites Jen and um, Heather to go to this spa that's in the middle of nowhere. So they go. I didn't really pay attention to the spa. I heard it. What, what they were saying when I was cooking, it sounded like it was a hot ass mess. But you know what? Jen complains about any every, any and everything. But maybe it really was. But anyway, they go and they go outside into these little hot tubs. You know, these tubs or whatever that's hot. Not an actual like. It really was a hot tub like in the actual sense of the word. Like, it was a tub, and it was water, and it was hot. But anyway, so yeah. 
So then they pretty much talk about the whole situation. Now, like I said, I've said this before. Whitney did stand up and she took responsibility. She's like, you know what? I should have never brought it up right then and there. You know, like it was wrong and that part was my fault. And you know, she was like, um, she 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 did take responsibility for that. She said it was my fault. I shouldn't have brought it up that way. Jen though starts snapping and is like it's your fault you know my husband hasn't even talked to me hasn't come home in four fucking days and he hasn't talked to me in that long and that's because of you like why would you do that you know that it was a good time this is my whole thing about the whole situation about that whole little scene i agree wholeheartedly when whitney says jen has a problem with projecting on other people she is like a classic case of projection you have so much stuff going on that instead of you stopping and taking responsibility for your actions and what's going on within your life, you want to make it everybody else's fault. And even Heather had to stop her and say, okay, yes, Whitney did do all of that, but you're the one who threw the glass. But you made me throw the glass. Do you get what I'm saying? I, it's, it reminds me of that um that one joke like on Martin when they both went to go, um, when him and Gina went to the uh, little anger, little retreatment. And she was like, you got to pour for your anger. She's like, oh my gosh, Gina, it's not that. It's like, people make me mad. Like, that's just pretty much what it was. It's like, it, it's like all void of responsibility. You're just saying that what everybody else does make you mad and you can't help it. Jen, you're a grown-ass fucking woman with two damn near grown-ass kids. You need to start taking responsibility in your actions. Yes, Whitney was wrong for bringing it up right then and there. However, the way that you reacted to it is what really caused your husband to be mad. Your husband could give two fucks about what it was that they was out there telling you. He got mad because you don't know how to control yourself. Between the alcohol and between, I believe, and like I said, I gotta go back because I, I swear she said that it was bipolar, but I can't remember. But whatever little mental issues you got going on, you go to the next level. And instead of being able to take responsibility for that, you want to blame everybody else on why this went wrong and why that went wrong and oh it's your fault that my husband didn't come home bitch are you serious like when you said she like so that was my fault it's it's my fault that your husband didn't come home for three days girl but you could tell whitney was over it. heather was the one like no we need to be her friend and i don't even feel like going back and forth and we just need to let her know that we're there i don't have time for those type of people and the reason why i said i feel like they are scared of her is because at least the way heather tried to call to her at the end like you want to know what no it's okay we was the one that was wrong this is that i don't give a fuck if somebody's going through so i'm sorry i'm sorry there's only like like um whitney said i can only be the mirror for but so long you can't keep taking your frustrations out on what's going on in your life on everybody else because it's not fair it's really not fair it's not fair to everybody else around you everybody else shouldn't have to be tortured by your nonsense you're a grown-ass woman you need you need to take responsibility for your actions in that moment you were wrong Whitney should have not brought it up in that occasion you're absolutely right but the way that you responded is what your husband's problem was which is what we'll get to now so like I said Whitney did go and she apologized and you know again and she said I did not mean for that to happen so you know and then uh fucking Jenna's like okay I mean that's fine but in her confession she's like well I'm not gonna let that go and then next week's episode when they go to Vegas here goes Jen trying to go in on trying to go in about Whitney to her cousin which is Heather like you think Heather is really going like flip on her cousin for you no and it's the same thing that she fucking did with Mary you sat there and you said that you forgave her but then the minute that Meredith and Whitney and everybody else wanted to be cool with her you had an issue if you don't forgive somebody just say that I'm trying to think what other show is that like I can't think of the other show but there's another show right now where the person just keeps saying that they're okay with something and then they're still really mad about it don't do that if you are really not in a good place with somebody, say that. But don't fucking fake it. It's it's, it's annoying, okay? Because then when you bring it back up, we're all confused, okay? So then we get to the last scene, and Coach Shaw comes home, and, you know, he pretty much tells her, like, I'm just tired of, like, you drinking. Like, I know you had an issue, but it was definitely enhanced by you drinking. And he don't got time, like... Jen, I understand you got a lot going on, but that man is an entire coach of a fucking football team, like of a college football team. You think people around him don't see this or, not, or is not going to see this? This man got to worry about his actual fucking image. And I know that shouldn't count, but it does. It counts for a lot. And you're on national TV acting like a fucking fool. That's probably embarrassing as fuck to him. You should be embarrassed for your own damn self, but I'm pretty sure that's embarrassing for him too. And so he's saying to her, you know, well, 
you know, like, you gotta get your drinking and stuff. Like, like, why are you drinking and why are you acting a fucking fool? And she's like, well, I'm drinking so I can numb the pain, so I can numb how I feel. And he's like, well, what are you numbing? And she's like, you know, you are not here. You're not here. You know, I try my best to be cool with your coaching and stuff like that, but you're never here. She's really more so upset, I think, about and heard about the whole situation with her dad. Like, when her dad was in a hospital, you couldn't be there. For the actual funeral, you couldn't be there. You just were never around for her. Like, you're just not around, period. And that's why Jen keeps all of those little assistants that she... What she calls the shot squad? That's why she keeps all of them around, because she's lonely. She has literally nobody. Oh, I'm going to bring up that at the end, too. Um... Yeah, she doesn't really have anybody. So, you know, he said that, you know, he was sorry and that he'll do his best. But my question is, can Coach Shaw, like, my question is this. Is Coach Shaw going that much because he has to be? Or is he going that much because he wants to be? Because if he actually can make the decision to be like, I know I have to be going, but I'm not going to be going as much, then I think that that decision should have been made a long time ago. But... If he's in a situation where it's like, I'm gone because I have no choice to be gone as much as I am, then I don't really know what else more that you want, girl. Because see, unfortunately, unfortunately, similar to Mary, this is the price. Like somebody said, you, you either going to pay on the front end or you're going to pay on the back end, but you're going to pay. Because this is this is the life that you chose. Same with Mary. Mary, you wanted all of these clothes and the designer stuff and all this. Guess what? You had to marry your old ass step granddaddy. That's the price you have to pay. And Jen, you wanted this wonderful lifestyle and you want to keep all the stuff that you got and be all fabulous. The price you have to pay is not having your husband around a lot. That's the price that you have to pay. Y'all want, that's the thing. Everybody wants to be so rich and all of this stuff, but nobody wants to fucking pay what is needed to be paid in these situations. That's what you have to do. And before I go, I forgot to bring up the little dinner or the little lunch that, um, uh, merit that. I second think Lisa had, because see, that's how important she's not to me. Lisa had, and she invited um, Meredith, and she had all of these other white women there, and oh my gosh, this is what I'm talking about. I love this, both of them. Oh my gosh, this is, I'm really getting to the point where I'm tired of both of them, specifically Lisa, but I'm kind of getting tired of Meredith too, because y'all need to stop making it lisa in particular needs to sit her ass down you're not better than nobody oh it's a vip guest list i've never in my life heard of none of those bitches ever in my life yes now i do agree that as women we should be able to sit down and uplift each other and not you know jump across the table that's fine but this is the thing y'all on real house of salt lake city so y'all can own but so much cut yourselves off from everybody else if y'all want y'all own show where it's nothing but y'all sitting up there and empowering each other then get your money together since y'all got since you have so much money lisa since you have so many business ideas how about you start a show with all of you hoes in that room guess what i bet you won't work because you're not interested enough girl it's nothing interesting about lisa it's nothing interesting about lisa and i want her off this screen i feel like everybody else has a little bit of an interesting storyline except her jen is that shit crazy and her husband ain't never around whitney got a whole situation right now with her daddy okay heather got a whole situation right now with trying to find herself you know post you know being in a marriage for a long time and married to this billionaire and just trying to figure out her life as far as dating um meredith got this whole situation that she dealing with, with her side nigga and seth lisa you have nothing going on Lisa does not have a storyline. The only storyline that Lisa has is her husband about to leave her. That's the storyline that's actually going on that she's not even peeping. Get this shit the fuck off my TV, y'all. I'm done. I'm out of here. Bye.